You're watching the Connect Network TV on The CW. A lot of it, I think it's just sticking to it and talking yourself through it and visualizing where you want to be. When, when fashion embraces all kinds of people, all kinds of experiences and brings them up front. That's the proudest thing I've ever seen fashion do. So I was in a band and my band played a fashion show. Right now, I have a very special visitor. I'm really, really honored. We have writer, musician, creator, and owner of Fashion Week Online, Pablo Starr. Welcome, Pablo Starr. Hello. Thank you for having me. Can you share the history and what inspired you to start this business? Yes, I was in a band and my band played a fashion show in Los Angeles. And um, I decided to start doing more fashion shows to bring people to see my band. Um, and then after a certain amount of time, I wasn't making really a living playing music. Uh, I had some success with radio play and things, but it, certainly I knew people who took off and made a lot of money um, and who were just able to be successful. And I wasn't able to reach that level financially. So I needed a business. So um, I took my, I heard that my, heard about this thing called Fashion Week, couldn't find out any, any, any information about it. So I decided to make a website where people could find information and, and go if they wanted to. Well, that you, you started in what year? Around 2011, 2012 in a tiny one, not even a bedroom, uh, like a studio with crappy carpet in Los Angeles with my girlfriend at the time and my wonderful cat at the time, just daydreaming about being involved in fashion and going to Fashion Week and having a career in something that was not a temporary job because I was doing temp jobs while I was playing music. When did Fashion Week Online blow up? When, uh, when, when did you start associating with that? It took about five years, um, which for me is a very short amount of time, considering how long I played music and I've done other projects. It was surprisingly, I mean, I think for a lot of people, five years, you had to do it for five years, not making any money and um, being discouraged. And, you know, for me, that's a cakewalk. Um, and I really couldn't think of what else to do. A couple of times I tried to quit. And my girlfriend at the time said, well, is, is it making you some money? I said, yeah. She said, are you people excited about it? I said, they seem to be. And so she said, uh, just keep going with it. That, that, by the way, that's really, really inspirational because you're you're telling everybody, you know, you stuck with it until it completely blew up because everybody knows what Fashion Week Online is. It's access to everything fashion. But how did you create this business out of out of the platforms and the passions that you have? You have so many layers to this. Well, I had a lot of good skills. Uh, fortunately, you know, I um, had been building websites for my band. So I had some basic ideas of the nuts and bolts of website creation because I've been doing it. Um, I have a master's degree in creative writing. So I was able to do a lot of the copywriting myself, which means just kind of like that veneer of professionalism when it comes to, and I'd worked in a newspaper before back in New Orleans. So I kind of knew the nuts and bolts also of, of sounding like Associated Press style and, and how, had an idea of how things should look. And then I just educated myself a little by little because at first it looked pretty bad. And um, I started studying other, just on my own, just studying other websites. And how, how, how does white space work in the fashion space? How do websites, how do the good websites look? How does Vogue look? How, do, how does L look? What about them makes them look the way they look? Um, and that was really took, a, it was a learning curve. What kind of fonts are they using? But it's little subtle things. My ex-girlfriend actually helped me a little, also would point out, look at all the white space. Look how much white yeah. space is in the luxury market. This is, it's a yeah. luxurious effect. So it was just educating myself about how things are supposed to look how things are supposed to sound and creating something that I thought people could be proud to be to be in. That's amazing. Well, Fashion Week started in New York, but you're calling me from Paris. So what tips do you have for those looking to grow their own blogs now that you are the, you know, I, the majesty of all of them? And I think if anything you're doing, you just have to stick to it. Um, and it's not going to be easy. And, and I think a lot of it is just getting past the, the raw discouragement. There is so much discouragement that goes into everything. A lot of it, I think it's just sticking to it and talking yourself through it and visualizing where you want to be because if you don't if you just visualize where you are like me in that tiny little apartment it's crushing so you have to have this daydream that's so vivid in your head that because I remember my ex-girlfriend asked me what motivates you you're like you're up at 6 7 a.m on a Saturday you're working on this website you're doing it all day we go do something come back I'm working on it again I get home from this hour and a half commute from this temp job in another part of Los Angeles if you've been to LA you know what the traffic is like there mm -hmm. hour minutes every night and I'm coming back and I'm working on it again. And it was just because I had this dogged vision of, you know, maybe at, at the time, the timing wasn't right for me to play music successfully, but maybe I could find something that was fun where I didn't have to go to this job every day um, and have this really sort of demoralizing experience of a, of a daily, <laughs> of a daily grind. You have an amazing history in, in the fashion industry. So you've seen a lot going on. How have you seen fashion change in the years? 
Well, you know, when I first started, you know, inclusiveness was a new thing. The idea of of, mm -hmm. of different of body positivity was a new thing. Yeah. I mean, the first yes. like you know plus size they called called them at the time. They're not even using that much anymore. Right. Uh, lines came out. It was a big deal. People of different capabilities on the runway. Right. Um, we had an acid attack survivor. You know, one year. I think that was very important. I'd like to see more of that. There are a lot of people that need to be brought into the fold. I think that a lot of the problems that people have in this world, it's not the things that happen to them. It's it's social isolation and alienation from not feeling like they're part of the larger community. So I think when when fashion does stuff like that, when it it embraces all kinds of people, sorry, all kinds of experiences and brings them up front. That's the proudest thing I've ever seen fashion do. So, you know, we also talked about this. Every visitor on the House of Faith and Fashion gets with three rapid questions. So you ready? Yeah. Okay. How much faith do you need to be in business? I think, I think you need an extreme amount of faith. Um, and I think part of it is because, I think you need a lot of faith in life, uh, basically. Um, oh, yeah. Because, um, you know, it's the, the funny thing about it is, I, I used to think that if I was faithful enough, I would get all the things that I want. Um, all my dreams would come true. If I was just faithful enough and had enough spirituality or faith, but you know, it's it occurs to me as I go, oh, yeah, that it's really up to the universe, God, however you want to put it, you know, what I'm going to receive. And I have to be grateful yeah. either way. Uh, it's not God or the universe's job to give me everything I want or make my dreams wow. come true. So uh, that's the next level, I think, of spirituality is, is acceptance. And that's real humility. And by humility, I don't mean like, oh, I'm like so pious. I mean, no, 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 it's humility. That's literally like when you, you yes. have to surrender and be like, you know, surrender. I'm doing my best. Whatever you're going to bring me, you're going to bring me. Uh, but so, I have to be grateful. And mm -hmm. in this world, with all the horrible things uh, you could arguably read about at any given moment <laughs> because they are existing, um, yes. you have to be grateful for everything. The, well, that's such a great answer. But, but so I'm going to ask you the second one. Do you think that your talents are God given? I, mean, I like to think so, but I think that routes back to the original question. Uh, that might be something between me and God and not something yes. between me and the world. So if I express something artistic, maybe nobody will ever see it except yes. this universe. Um, but maybe mm -hmm. that's the relationship. Here's my last delicate question. Describe how a person should dress to a house of worship. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't think I, I think it it really depends on why you're dressing up. I think if you're dressing up, if you're dressing up as a, as a, as a form of being sacred or as a form of communion, I think you should dress well. Um, but if you're dressing up to impress the other people there in the place with you, then you're kind of missing the whole point of being there. Yes. A hundred, a hundred percent. So I thank you so much for visiting with me and bringing such, I can't, I can't think of it. Humility, humanity, just grace, to the fashion industry that I think that a lot of people didn't know is out there. And you are huge and your access is huge. And I thank you for really being on.